Hey there, Rick Sage, recording at the Rimrock Studios in Bishop, California. Welcome to Season 2 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I speak with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz and share their stories, tips, advice, productivity tricks, and ideas you can use to take your career or business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. I've used Audible for many years now. I'm on the road a lot, and Audible allows me to enjoy the great books I discover or are recommended by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. This episode is with Krista Dill, Sales Director with Outdoor Retailer. Krista tells us about her experience as a Division I volleyball player at Duke University, how she got involved with Outdoor Retailer, and the changes she's seen in the industry over the years. Hey, Krista, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, great to chat with you. So, did you survive the holidays? I did. It was nice to kind of unplug for a while. I'll bet. You guys have probably been super busy, I'll bet, huh? Yeah, it's been a it's been quite the year for us. So it's been nonstop, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to say yeah. the least. A lot of change, um, but a lot of exciting things to come out of it. Yeah, cool, good. So let's start with your uh, D one volleyball experience at Duke. That must have been a bunch of hard work, but a lot of fun, huh? Uh, yeah, I um, I like to look back on that time as um, kind of one of probably the highlights of uh, my life. It was a really incredible opportunity to be able to. Uh, play the sport I love yeah. and uh, get a scholarship from it. So oh, good. I still, yeah, I still do my best to stay in touch with my former teammates and, and coach. Uh-huh. Do you get back to Duke very often to watch a match or watch a basketball game? Or you know, I've been fortunate enough uh, to see some games locally, actually oh. up in Los Angeles or San Diego. So um, you know, and weddings tend to be a reunion for our team as well. Oh, right. And, uh, girls get married. So we've um, been able to keep in touch and then obviously cheering on uh, Duke basketball too. Yeah, cool. That's that great. Season. Yeah, that's awesome. So you've been with Emerald for about uh, a little longer than 10 years now. How'd you get started there? I know. I can't, I can't believe it's, <laughs> it's been a long 10 years. Time. <laughs> but <laughs> now that you say it, I actually, um, I actually ended up just knowing somebody that was already working here in the office at that time. The a company was owned by Nielsen and uh-huh. um, had an interview with Kenji Hartunian and was able to come on board really as a junior sales rep and took over uh, the West Coast Territory, which was, um, I mean, I like to think one of the best territories with a lot of solid outdoor brands. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, fast forward here, uh, 10 years later, I'm now the sales director uh, heading up the sales team for Outdoor Retailer and Outdoor Retailer Plus No Show. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's been, been a, you've seen a lot of interesting things there, a lot of growth, a lot of change in the, both within uh, Nielsen and Emerald and then the outdoor industry. What are you most proud of? You know, I mean, that's a tough question to kind of summarize it, but I think looking back, what we can really be proud of is just um, doing our best to listen to the industry. Mm -hmm. And as you know, like I was saying, there's been a lot of change this last year, Um, not only within uh, the trade show landscape, but just also the landscape of retail and um, within the marketplace. So um, for us, we're kind of just looking forward to some positive changes as we evolve too. You know, everyone's looking to kind of continue to stay relevant and uh, drive value uh, to our customers. So I think with us, it's just uh, looking forward uh, to growing together with right. the industry uh, in, in 2018. Cool. What has surprised you the most about the growth? Um, you know, I wouldn't know if it would be surprise as much as just, um, you know, just glad to see that everyone's really been uh, embracing a lot of change here recently. Mm-hmm. You know, it's easy to continue to do the same thing over and over again, but right. I think a lot of uh, you know, our industry is really looking internally to see what we can do to continue to evolve on uh, not only, um, you know, as retailers, as brands, um, but as uh, enthusiasts to kind of continue to have a very inclusive and open industry. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we are. It's, it's That's what I love about the industry. We, you know, at the end of the day, we can go have a beer no matter what we've done during the day competing against one another. It's pretty cool. It, and I have to say, with our company, too, we work in a lot of in different industries. And this really, uh, outdoor industries really stood out as being unique in that way. With its, its culture, right. uh, with the sense of community, uh, it really, I think you can see that, too, at the trade show. 
Yeah. Every time you come back, it's about connecting and networking and seeing old friends. Yeah, yeah. It's like a big giant high school reunion every year, twice a year. <laughs> it is <laughs> super fun. Well, now three times. That's right. That's right. Three times a year. So, what has been most challenging in all those years? Do you think? You know, I think the things that are challenging are when you when you don't really see it coming. And I look back, and um, you know, there was that kind of poignant moment moment for I think everybody with the recession of oh eight and oh nine. Yeah. Uh, and just seeing that, um, you know, hit people, it was really surprising. There was just, um, we're kind of all on top of our game. Uh, and, um, I think everyone kind of had to, uh, really make some major adjustments into how we operate our businesses and how we approach uh, business in general. So, right. um, I think that was a big learning experience. Um, you know, if, if you were to ask someone else, maybe who's been, um, you know, with the company for a much longer time, I mean, I think there's some really poignant moments too, like the, a tornado. The a tornado, night. yeah, right. Right, and right. and that's something I, you know, I hear people who tell stories who are there, you know, like Larry Harrison or Kenji Hortunian, who yeah. are some of the first responders, and those are those are those moments that are so challenging that, um, you know, the people who are part of it uh, really, you know, you could respond in two ways. You could either have packed up and left and um, call it quits, but everyone really was just, um, you know, opened up their booths to one another. Yeah. It was just mm-hmm. the, the spirit of the industry really shown through that. Yeah. I think everyone that was participated in that show was really proud of how that uh, ended up coming together. Yeah. I'll never forget that. We were, Eagle Creek was, right? we were upstairs, uh, at the Utah convention center there and we opened the doors and we had, our booth was divided up into a bunch of little meeting rooms, obviously. And we gave up meeting rooms, you know, just to various brands just so they had a place. It was just, it was amazing how that happened. That's, that's another another good one. Yeah. Pretty cool. What do you think uh, one of the industry's biggest challenges are in the next couple of years, two to three years, say? You know, I think it's just going to be continuing to adapt to change. Uh, you know, as I kind of mentioned before, I think we're seeing kind of a new consumer emerge, uh, kind of a conscious consumer, which I feel really will uh, embrace the outdoor community. Right. Um, but, you know, we need to continue to just uh, maintain relevance and, and understand how the business model needs to change, how specialty retail continues to be special mm-hmm. and deliver that extra value. How do we evolve and, you know, with, um, you know, as online business continues to grow and be really relevant? I think for us, we have, um, as an industry, we have such rich brands and storytelling. Yeah. How do we continue to get that brand storytelling um, to the, the consumer in an authentic way? And I think we have a really neat opportunity with specialty retail to deliver that. So it's about not becoming a commodity. It's about really making sure that that brand story, um, that we you know do things that are enriching and true to us, right. and that that shows through on the uh, retail level. It's nice to see how people have shifted their stories too over the years. You know, I mean, there for a while right. in the beginning, we were all about you know hardcore outdoor, and now we've become we embraced the mainstream consumer <laughs> a little more. It's awesome. I think so. I know. I think that we've really seen kind of like a renaissance in the industry. I mean, it, 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 I think everything, there's milestones, right? When sure. it really was about just getting outside and finding yourself, you know, maybe it was more of a solo attempt or an individual experience. And now right. it's about sharing right. and, and social is so important with that. And it might not be, you know, um, somebody in Everest, it might just be doing a weekend camping trip with a right. family right. and yeah. um, still having access to technology uh, still having functionality, but also having fashion and access. And, you know, uh, so I think that those are things that the outdoor industry is really embracing. Um, yeah. And I think we've seen it too at the show. We we introduced a uh, kind of a concept area several years ago called Venture Out mm-hmm. that was to feature emerging brands and kind of that story of, you know, fashion meeting function and the lifestyle, emerging lifestyle brands that are really going to be, you know, kind of at the forefront um, right, to right. bring in that younger consumer. And I think you're seeing a lot of, you know, senior uh, manufacturers in the space too that are coming out with specialized lines or mm-hmm, things that are, mm-hmm. are are speaking more to, you know, athleisure or softer story uh, that will kind of relate more to um, perhaps more of a fringe consumer to get them in and, and, and engaged. Mm, right. And what are you hearing about 2018? Are people super excited? I think so. I think, um, you know, new new year, um, kind of new start. I uh-huh. think a lot of people are excited about 18. Uh, I think it's, um, you know, going to be 
you know, for the snow sports industry, obviously we're, you know, always praying for snow. Um, you know, we <laughs> ended it's with pretty dry up here on the happened. east side right now. <laughs> Mammoth's got <laughs> snow, but it's the great white stripe of slide for life stuff. It's scary. I but. know. It's, <laughs> and it keeps, it's harder and harder to predict as seasons, you know, a, yeah, exactly. a little later. So, you know, I think we're you know, continue to pray for the best, um, you know, best possible outcome as far as weather. And then, um, you know, I think for us, as we're going into a new year and new show platform in 18 with, um, you know, kind of the merger of um, Outdoor Retailer Plus No Show, right, which was, right. uh, you know, decades in the making. Yeah, I awesome. think there's going to be a really exciting, I know it's really cool, really exciting opportunity for the retailer to kind of be exposed to a whole different segment of product categories that, you know, hopefully gives them an edge yeah, and lets yeah. them bring in new brands, um, you know, maybe keep doors open longer or, you know, um, bring in a different customer that they weren't able to before right. um, with kind of that crossover story. I think we're going to get a lot of a big bump in enthusiasm too. I think it's people are real excited about the, the it's been talked about for so many years. Now it's finally happening. Everybody's psyched. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I know. It's, it's really cool to finally see, um, you know, that come together. I've heard, you know, stories from folks again, like, um, you know, on our team who were, had been to, the snow show when right. really where outdoor outdoor retailer was birthed right yeah exactly at least the winter show there. component yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got to see it too and understand you know kind of like uh, the other level of um maybe just a meaning that comes out of kind of bringing the two markets back together that had started actually as right. one mm-hmm. right. um so it's kind of a neat uh component as well on top of just again you know Shows shows are are made for you know efficiency and bringing together who you don't know. Right. Uh, so I think there'll be a more opportunity with um, you know bringing those two shows together that had pretty little crossover to see more and more people that you weren't exposed to before on a buyer side or yeah, on the media, yeah. uh, media side, see new product, and on a brand side, you know potentially open up more doors or. Uh, grow the business on different channels. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So you get to speak with a lot of brands also, as well as retailers. What what are they saying about 2017? Will it go down as a good year? Um, you know, I, I do. I, I work with, you know, our team works with, gosh, over 1,200 yeah. different brands that span all, all um, you know, all sizes, all product categories, um, you know, all um, levels of market share, and, you know, our buyer relation team deals, um, you know, one-on-one with retailers. And I think overall the perspective is, you know, um, you know, has been, you know, again, a lot of just evolving the model, both mm-hmm. on the brand and the retailer side. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a you know, big emphasis to continue to how do we tell that story? How do we, you know, you know, with emphasis on training on the retail level and really having that specialty retailer hands-on approach, you know, right. um, I think that there's a big uh, a positive outlook and, and uh, that we can look to specialty retailers to kind of continue to grow and lead the way to be our storytellers. Uh, and I think 17, um, you know, depending on who you ask, you'll yeah, get a right. different answer. Of course, right. Uh, but <laughs> always, I think there's some good, um, some good things that did come out of 17 overall for the industry. And again, lots of change, but, uh-huh, you know, right. excitement about 18. Yeah, cool. And do you have any suggestions or advice for someone wanting to get into the outdoor biz or maybe grow their career if they're already in the biz? Yeah, you know, I would say, um, you know, be passionate. I think what's great about this industry that is that it's, it is really inclusive and that uh, you can, um, you have an opportunity to find a mentor. Mm-hmm. A lot of the the individual, you know, founders of many of the brands that are kind of the iconic brands in the industry still work in the industry. Um, so, you know, I think being passionate, passionate, willingness to be a part of a team, um, you know, obviously finding your niche and in, in, in an outdoor activity is always great, but mm-hmm. also looking to make those connections with a mentor. And I really think that there's been some great steps forward with, again, taking advantage of some, um, some really great knowledge and, yeah. and uh, individuals that we have. And in, in the industry, you have um, outdoor industry Association and Outdoor Foundation that launched the Future uh, Leadership Academy. Right. And that ha- I think that's that now in the third year. And um, I think that's a great step forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so anything that's we can continue project. to do, yeah. Um, yeah, as a brand as well, or, you know, um, any of the companies too, and as, um, you know, from a retailer to a manufacturer, um, I think there's also advice for, for our industry to be open mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. to see talent outside of, um, you know, maybe you're uh, who you look to right, immediately right. and also lean on your, indiv- your staff that you have currently. I think we have a lot of great people 
who are in the industry um, and, you know, retention of talent is really important Mm -hmm. for us as we continue to kind of have to be competitive with other industries. So whatever we can do uh, internally to advance good people, to train them, uh, to let them have support and mentorship is really important as well. So we, we need to play a role too. Who are some of your mentors in the biz? Um, I would say that, you know, really internally I had, when I started Kenji uh-huh. Cartunian was uh-huh. a great person for me to really shadow and, and, um, uh, follow in, in his footsteps and learn daily. Marissa Nicholson, mm-hmm. uh, as well has been my, my mentor here for many, many years and a, a great soundboard, a great leader. Uh, and then the addition of Larry Harrison has been really special yeah. <laughs> yeah. as well. Um, awesome. with, um, you know, actually working with him one-on-one as a customer to be able to, um, be working with them as a member of the team has been great. He has right. such a tremendous insight uh, and um, history, obviously, with um, being a part of the, um, yeah. kind of the original crew to kind of grow up in this space. So uh, I really appreciate his um, advice and support. Um, so those would be some people. I've got to get him on the show. You do. I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why? This should be Larry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. He I would think be great. Yeah. He'd be, there's so many great people. That's the thing. I, I was uh, toying around the other day with maybe shifting the, the numbers, but there's so many people. I think I could do five of these a week and, and stay completely busy. It's crazy. Honestly, you could. And I think what's really neat about um, you know, just look, kind of looking over a lot of the folks you've been interviewing and seeing some familiar faces, too, is you're really getting a great cross-section. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing anybody from, um, you know, nonprofits right. um, to athletes to right. uh, folks who've worked with, um, you know, within the brands and um, retail space. So you're really getting a great perspective, 360 you know, degrees there. Yeah, it's fun. Um, I'm trying to keep I, it pretty broad. Yeah. Thanks. I think um, I'm trying to broaden the definition too. I think as as the outdoor industry has evolved, you know, we have broadened the definition by default. We're now, you know, now we're merging with the snow show. You know, we're talking to mm-hmm. fly fishing folks and outdoor photographers, and yep. I'm trying to do that in the in the podcast too, just because everybody's got a unique perspective and possibly very unique activity in the outdoor industry. So pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I bet. And I think you know having that approach to is, you know, you mentioned photography, fly fishing. I mean, we're so, there's so many components of the outdoor industry right. and we're, the umbrella is so broad. I mean, right. com- really compared to a lot of the other singular industries you might work in or, or see kind of some, you know, as we see them evolving at the same time, I think it's been a huge part of um, our success is to have mm-hmm. that breadth yeah. mm-hmm. and, 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 and acceptance of mm-hmm. all the different activities that can fall under it. And right. it's really given us um, uh, ability to be, you know, a pretty stable industry when times are tough, um, right, but right. also have, uh, see that so many people participate in multiple activities as well. So it makes it the huge tribe that it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any daily routines you use to keep your sanity You meditate, exercise, walk the dog? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, you know, I'm, it's something I can turn you to kind of, you know, really work to focus on for myself is just balance. I think all of us have that. Yeah, we all do. do You're working working around the clock. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, for me coming with my background, uh, being an athlete in the past, exercise has been really key. Mm -hmm. I try to get in the gym. Uh, For me, actually lifting uh, is something Uh I really enjoy Uh to do and do often um, work out with my boyfriend and try to get in there. Um, Also, just I I happen to live in a really great place uh, in Orange County. So, you know, whenever I can get out and walk by the beach, um, try to do that on the weekends, get some time out in the sun. It's just um, breathe some fresh air. Yeah, that's right. That's a good (laughs) spot. That always helps. (laughs) Yeah. Um, What what, uh, outdoor activities do you participate in? You know, I'm, I I really enjoy just hiking. We uh-huh. have um, some some really great spaces just yeah. around here. Like yeah. I was mentioning, we're um, here by the coast, so there's some um, some state parks like uh, Crystal Cove uh, and Elmora Bay. That's mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. or Elmora that's really close by. So I haven't gotten to get out there as much as I would like, um, but. Again, we, being in California, we have a lot of access to. Yeah, we're we spoiled. The beach to the mountain. <laughs> right. We don't have to get we out are. every day because every day is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's another right. sunny day. I don't need to go out today. You know, I should, but, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> what uh, What are some of your favorite books, Jared? Do you give books as gifts very often? Uh, you know, I, I don't get books as gifts too often anymore. Mm-hmm. I do think they make great gifts. Yeah. Um, but um, I really kind of 
I have to say, I really enjoyed Unbroken. Oh, um, yeah. The story by, about uh, Louis Zamperinelli, um, Zamperini. And, um, you know, if I kind of go back to you, and yeah, I enjoyed reading The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander okay. Dumas. Okay, cool. Um, so those would, I tend to gravitate towards stories um, with uh, kind of leadership and where there's, um, you know, uh, some sort of a turn in the story where, you know, like with Louis Sanfernini, I mean, just the story of survival. Yeah, that was a great was pretty story. epic. Yeah, um, was... <laughs> <laughs> um, Kind of unparalleled. So yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, you can kind of really get behind that and put some perspective on your own life yeah, no as kidding, well. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just got to actually go and see a really cool exhibit on um, Ernest Shackleton and kind of no. hear that story of him. And um not sure if you're familiar. Uh, that, him and what yep, he, he, that is one of the best <laughs> books ever written, in my opinion. And I was fortunate to go down to Antarctica and see his grave. We yeah, we, I was with a, on a Sobek trip. And I got down to go see his grave and see the mountain that he climbed over to get back to civilization. Oh, it's just phenomenal. And see Elephant Island where they were hanging out underneath that boat. It's just, oh, my God, how did these guys do that? You know, I don't know. It's amazing. Perseverance and yeah, like yeah. The, to stay positive for yeah. that amount of time. So I, I just really got exposed to that about two weekends ago, and I'd oh, love cool. to read the book on, um, on him. So yeah, it's a great book. Yeah. Bucket list. Cool. And uh, do you have a favorite piece of outdoor gear under a hundred dollars? Ah, well, favorite piece. Well, I always you got your tried and true, um, you know, hydration, and now you can oh, get right, it every yeah. color, every size. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm a big fan of um, you know Lucy Active. Oh of yeah, those are awesome. Discontinued, but mm-hmm. I just went up and swooped about three pairs. Of the there you go. Yeah, cool. same uh, leggings they have tall, so I'm. Um, uh-huh. Uh huh. As you imagine, I'm pretty pretty long, so yeah, I love yeah. to um, love anything that kind of caters to the taller taller female, mm-hmm. uh, and just um, a couple good bottles to have on hand. There you go. Good. Yeah. And do you have any favorite apps that you use regularly, or podcasts you listen to, or other digital? You, you guys, know, do you guys use Slack. You guys must use Slack or something similar there. Right? We don't. Um, we huh. don't internal. I am. We rely on. I know Slack. Um, my my boyfriend uses that often just mm-hmm. within his own work with um, computer programming, but. I really, you know, LinkedIn has been yeah, a really uh-huh. great benefit for networking and staying on top of kind of trending stories. Um, you know, uh, Pinterest or Facebook personally, um, you know, we, uh, po- as far as a podcast, I really love to refer to anybody and I'm sure more and more people know about it. Um, just, uh, you know, the start with why by oh, Simon yeah. Sinek. It's awesome. I yeah. think it's such a great, um, you know, Ted, Ted Talk to see yeah. and um, mm-hmm. would love to read uh, his book. It's another as well. great book. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. He's got a couple yeah. of good books. Yeah. Uh, anything you'd like to say or ask of our audience before we wrap up here? Uh, you know, just I hope to see everybody in Denver yeah. and as we kick off uh, 2018. So, especially with the, the, the new show, and um, wish everybody a happy new year. Cool. Thanks. And how can people find you? LinkedIn's the best place? LinkedIn and our website has all my contact information. So, cool. uh, right. feel free awesome. to reach out. We'll link to that and link to those books you mentioned. Uh, Thanks for the time. I appreciate talking with you. Thanks so much, Rick. Really appreciate it, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See you in a couple weeks. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Krista Dill. You can catch up with Krista by email at krista.dill at outdoorretailer.com. That's K-R-I-S-T-A dot D-I-L-L. And also follow her on LinkedIn. You find links to everything we discussed in the show notes at theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash episodes slash 070. I would be grateful if you visit iTunes and give us a rating and review, and be sure to share this episode or tell a friend about it. Thanks go out to Jason Cox for the new Outdoor Biz logo. Great work, Jason. Thank you very much. I'd love your support, too. Go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-O-N, and see the many ways you can support the show. Thanks for listening. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure and go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com where you'll find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Thanks for listening, and until next time, be sure and make time to get outside.